Hey, I'm Jeff Kelly with SUU Aviation. Today we're going to service a nose strut. I'm going to check tail and make sure that that's secured. Now it's secure. And you want to secure this in every... Alright, so that's what we're simulating here is uh, upon landing, a soft landing, but the nose gear went up into uh, or com fully compacted and caused a loud thump and the pilot suggests or thinks that we might have an air or an oil problem. So what do we do? Well, normally you would check uh, the air pressure on this strut to see how much we've got, but we're going to do a full on uh, nose landing gear oleo strut servicing. Next step, let's take the core out. I mean, we, we have find nose, so we nose, have nose tire. Some tires. servicing tires, move of air filter. Keep on going down here. All right. I can't see with my old eyes. Are right, you? You got it on, online? We need some bifocals. That way I. That's that's real old man though. Once again, the bifocal. You need more gray in here. I'm wearing them constantly. For sure. I don't think it's. All right. Let's follow that. Let's get that nose off. No wheel fairing, so we're good. Remove nut and washer from one end to the axle rod. Might have a cotter pin, I don't know. Does it have a cotter pin? Cotter pin? So, to prevent it from turning, you got a cotter pin. This is not even installed properly. You have a cotter pin, like that, that goes in, and you go through the hole, and then you're supposed to mushroom these out, and it'll stop it from one, coming out, and two, from turning. The tire from along with this. No, it'll just keep it'll keep this flange bolt from turning, uh -huh. um, and uh, keep the actual wheel on. Uh, rotates and is torqued down, and it'll keep the tire on. That's the whole point of this this nut here, the tire on. So, you know, one of the things you do before your flight is you inspect the landing gear and make sure that you're you're good, um, that you're not missing any vital pieces to keep the aircraft. Well, or for things for falling off of it, so. Right, well, so if you don't have any... So, like, all this is good, but, like... And wheels out. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. All right, so we're taking the, uh, the nose tire off. Makes it a little bit easier to manipulate the strut up and down. And now we're going to be able to uh, start our nose landing gear servicing operation. The, uh, the main wheels are not off the ground yet, so... Guys, mm -hmm. I need to cut this in half. We'll see how this works. Let's see. Let's see if it actually just snips. All right, look at that. It'll be all right. Think that's gonna work? Yep. We gotta remove the oil. We've already removed the air out of the, the strut. That's the most safe, uh, or the most critical part is you're dealing with safety on a pressurized strut. So we remove the strut uh, air out. Now we gotta take the, uh, the oil out. It's a pretty easy process of compressing the strut. The oil comes out. There we go. Wow, really? This thing didn't have any fluid at all. Is it coming? Yep. Oh, wow. Alright, I'll tell you what. Take that thing, put it into the uh, into the full reservoir. The good the good fluid. You get it? Yep. Alright, I'm going down. Okay. We're gonna suck the fluid in. Alright, you cap it off, put it in the uh because we're gonna flush it now. Ready? And compress. So notice the different color, right? Clean red went in and dirty, nasty, brown, whatever color comes out. So right now what right, we're doing go back into the, uh, is basically flushing out the inside of the strut to clean out whatever gunk or goo is in there. Um, to try and clean it out. You know, it'll work better with all the little valves that are inside. Here we go. until we get red in, like clear red in and clear red out. So if you look at the... Well, we probably won't get... Probably not. With yeah, we probably won't get full on uh, red coming out. On an airworthy aircraft, not a training aircraft, you definitely want clean in, clean out. Oh, uh, it's looking better. Yeah, it's getting clear. All right, going back to a clean one. Yeah, let's go clean again. Could be red or is it All right. Go, here we go. We're gonna do. Uh, let's do one more time, and we're gonna we're gonna call it after this. All right. Okay. All right. Extend. <laughs> what was it? It's like forbidden Kool Aid. Don't drink it. <laughs> Put the compress. And compress. It's getting clearer. 
the main thing here is we do not want it to introduce air into the system. So I want to jack this up and hold it there. So much like your brakes on your car, if you have air in your brakes, you'll get real spongy brakes. So the compression ratio will change, right? So you'll have, you may have a fully serviced, so you think, uh, nose gear strut, but when you come on landing, it's going to get real squishy. It's not going to give you the correct dampening um, that it should, right? So because the air will actually compress inside there, whereas liquid doesn't. That's why we use hydraulic fluids and stuff like that because it doesn't compress quite as easy at all so it's compared to air. We've compressed the strut, we've serviced it, we've uh, bled out all of the the old fluid, tried to replace it with new fluid, we've done mostly that. Uh, we'll compress the strut again as you can see it's compressed to allow no more air to introduce into the strut. Now we're going to cap it off with the valve core. So that's a standard valve core. You'll find those in tires if your valve core is leaking on your tire, you're going to have a flat tire. Same principle, you've got high pressure and low pressure valve cores. Uh, this one I think is low pressure. It doesn't say H on it, does it? Yeah, so you're not dealing with a high pressure strut here. All right, valve core goes back in. I don't want to throw the... This is a, a Piper Cherokee service manual, so when you're working on an aircraft, you need to have some form of tech data uh, that shows you how to get the job done. And uh, in order to sign off the airworthiness of an aircraft, you need to use a manual um, to sign off the airworthiness, to return the aircraft back to airworthiness standards. So use the manual, use the reference for, uh, for the work you did. All right, uh, this is aircraft inspection repair and alterations from U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration, 4313-1 Bravo. Everybody knows it as yeah. 4313-1 Bravo. It's a tongue twister. But it goes into bolt identification, screw, rivet. Um, I mark some of these pages because they're, uh, they're good for classes. So uh, you've got turnbuckles here and the type of safety uh, wrap that you put on it. If this is spelled out in the aircraft manual or the service manual, you have to follow the service manual. But if it's not in there, um, you are allowed to use this guy. So you got torque specifications or recommended torque values, but you can't use this because you got one in here, right there. So you got to use the service manual first. All right. But if this if this aircraft didn't have it then you can absolutely follow this guy. Recommended torque values for aircraft. Bolt identification, so bolt head identification. And breaker bar, did you get it? No. Did you just bust your hand? <laughs> Son of a... On the S16 we call those falcon bites. Anytime you bust your head, knuckles, anything, you start bleeding, and it's S16 falcon, so. You falcon bite? Falcon bite. Falcon! Yeah. And pull. Right, so get in there, hold it on there, and then you can kind of pull. So use your use your leverage to your advantage. You don't want to bust your knuckles. This this is your breaker bar. So in the event that something's being stubborn, this is the next step up from stubbornness is break the threads. Well, you're not going to break the threads, but it's just it breaks it loose. It breaks it loose. But. Uh, Jason actually is a uh, He-Man in real life, um, so he managed to get it without a breaker bar. All right, so we need to be able to see a little bit of oil in there, and I need a flashlight. I got one right here. I don't see any oil in there, do you? No. All right, that's small. All right, <laughs> All right, so we were just checking uh, the fluid level. According to the manual, you take the filler cap off. So where we took that valve out there. <laughs> we took the valve out there. Uh, we actually took this whole assembly out of the strut. And then when we visually checked it with a flashlight, it doesn't work. Uh, and to verify we have fluid all the way to the top of the strut and then we're going to put this guy back in and then we'll be set to uh, put air. We're, we're getting closer to actually putting air in the strut now. Remember to check your torque specs. Oh, oh, yeah, there you go. 
45. We need torque range, guys. 45 pounds. Hey, uh, quiz. All right, so this is uh, oral and practical type stuff for your uh, for your AMP. How do you convert foot pounds to inch pounds? Uh, divide by 12 or multiply, depending on which way you're yeah, going. Depending. All right, Sense yeah. Way. So times 12, right? What is that? Oh, it is already in foot pounds. Wow. How fancy is that? Yeah. So some torque wrenches come with a foot, or they come in foot pounds. Some torque wrenches come in inch pounds, and some manuals come in. They tell they call out foot pounds of torque, and some manuals call out inch pounds of torque, and some manuals actually have both. So you're like, well, you just got to do the math. American, American, <laughs> American. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then you got the BL105 over there that's uh, Messerschmitt, uh, bought out by Airbus. So it's all in metric. So that's why we got metric tools too. So we got the BL-105 helicopter, same model as the Animal. Go check out that video. Uh, and then um, we've got American-made, American-made aircraft, and they always go with inches and uh, and SAE. Inch standards, standard. Forty. Dog. I apologize. I was about to call you out. You're good. <laughs> I was just checking you, man. All right. Try to, try to soak down in your mind. Thank you. Good, I heard that click. Yep. Uh, there's 45 right there. 45? Yeah. Foot pounds. Foot pounds. Foot pounds of torque. Bueno? All right, so we've got the valve in. Uh, did you make sure that that is torqued? Yeah. So the, the core, the valve core is torqued. And the uh, the, plug. the plug is torqued, so we should not be introducing any air into the system when we bring this guy down. But we're going to actually, with airplane rays, we're going to compress and extend the, uh, the gear strut several times to ascertain whether the strut uh, actuates freely and there's no leak. Weight of the gear fork wheel should extend the strut. And you're checking for any fluid leak through here. I mean, I know it's kind of messy. Here, bring it down. There we go. All right, now we're gonna apply air to the strut. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do we have caution tape? I don't know, but he needs he needs a reflective belt. Uh, get out of here. <laughs> Hook up the strut servicing gauge to the strut servicing port. Big break. Big So this is all the way out. All right, compressed air. Inherent safety issues with compressed air. We got to be careful. We got to know what we're doing. This guy's all the way out. This guy is off. We're gonna bring it open, and we got 1,500 psi. All right. This is a nitrogen bottle. We fill our struts with nitrogen. That's very common in the industry to use nitrogen because, well, it doesn't have oxygen in it, so it won't oxidize anything, and it won't induce corrosion. Um, this is also. Uh, a pressure vessel that is has moisture removed. So we're not introducing moisture, we're not introducing oxygen, which are two things you absolutely need for corrosion, plus an electrolyte. It has electrolytes. Electrolytes, for your hydration needs. Rondo's got what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. Rondo! Rondo <laughs> Rondo we're filling Rondo it with Rondo! Rondo. All right. um, the other thing with nitrogen is it also doesn't fluctuate as much with temperature change. I mean, my only yes, like, like, yes. Like air Thank, you for, yeah. Thank you for interjecting. Yeah. With that. I appreciate put you. Nitrogen in tires for the same reason, yeah? Yep. So it doesn't expand and compress. Nitrogen tires. So you uh, does you'll not, have a steady does not fluctuate with. Without, um, uh, cleared. All right, we're going to try about 70 psi. Go ahead and crack that open. We should see that thing drop. This one? No, we're not on all the way. Close that off. All right, I'm going to give you a little bit more pressure. Okay. There we go. Up to about 100 psi, maybe. That should work. All right, close it off. There you go. I'm going to close this guy off. No more pressure out of the bottle, at least. All right, and let's disconnect. All right, now we have an overpressurized strut, and when we put the uh, the wheel back on, we'll get the aircraft back down on the ground, and then we'll be able to bleed pressure out of the top of the strut to get a certain inch requirement of the chrome. So when the strut is compressed under Normal aircraft weight, the strut chrome is supposed to be about two point, actually it is supposed to be 2.75 inches. So we'd measure the chrome to be about 2.75, and once that's good, we have successfully serviced the strut. Game on! Let's put this tire back on. Like good coffee in the morning. Oh, okay, I have to, I'm obligated now. I'll give you a dollar if you take a sip. 
Andrew. <laughs> Hello. Just a dollar. Mm. That's who it is. All right, I'll give you five dollars. <laughs> Cinderella's oh, no. back from the boat. Mm-mm. Num num. <laughs> just a taste. It's mechanical. Just a just a just a, just a taste. Just a taste. Just a sip. Just a sip. One dollar. Yeah. <laughs> you guys gonna drink hydraulic fluid? You have it? Well, I challenged them. You have it? I wouldn't do that. I mean, I've done it, but it wasn't on purpose. It's like, you know, you're working on an aircraft, it's the engine's running, the pilot's in the cockpit, he's going through his flight control checks, and you go up and bleed the hydraulics, and you plop, yeah, just right in your face. And then you go home, and the only way you can get that stuff out of your clothes, pro tip. Coca-Cola. All right, I'm, I'm not a uh, I'm not a sponsor of Coca-Cola, so anything that has an acidic uh, carbon infused drink will get it out of your clothes. Are ready to get that tire put back on? So the bearing cups are good. We're good. And good on that side. Yep. We're putting the tire back on. Yeah, that's the next step. So one of the big things, guys, make sure that the tire, if it's directional, make sure it's going on the right. Direction of rotation, right? It'll say on the sidewall. The valve core was on the uh, uh, the right last time. Universal direction, but we'll put it right back on the exact same way it came off. Valve core on the right side. That okay, so bring the tire up. Hey, right. come on, bring it up. Let's go ahead and slide that bad boy through. What does it say in the book as far as how many threads on one side? Does it specify? Gents, it doesn't specify. Uh, how many threads need to be. So we'll make sure we do the exact same turns on the left and right side so we have equal threads, not for a Piper wheel. Uh, Once you, yeah, get your yeah, so I mentioned uh, torque values earlier. Uh, the one way that you can get your torque value or ascertain what torque you need on a particular bolt is the thread pitch and the diameter of the bolt. So you would take diameter measurement of bolt, right? So you take that down. And then you also get your thread pitch gauge out. So this would be the metric side, and this would be uh, SAE, right? So this is the amount of threads per inch. So 22, 20, I don't know, we'd probably be dealing with maybe 20 here, which it's not. Oh, it might be. It might have been right on the money. Your glasses, Grandpa? So that is a 20, 20 threads per inch. So once you find out the diameter, the thread pitch, you and you're able to, uh, to, to determine how much torque a particular nut or bolt needs. Things like this that mechanics leave behind can be detrimental to an aircraft if it gets it in its intake, especially like a turbine uh, engine aircraft. Like um, these things getting inside the intake of that will cause destructive um, damage. Like, you know, it'll cause it to. How does a mechanic mitigate fall? Be clean. <laughs> Cleanliness. Pick up after yourself. Um, if you clip a wire, what you just clipped and a lot of times little FOD cans we use what little coffee cans what does FOD stand for so for an object and debris so that is something you will see throughout the avi aviation world whether it's mechanic side pilot side some airports where they yeah, have on uh, every on every door to to like you know going out to a ramp or something it's like FOD yep FOD, FOD, free, FOD, FOD, FOD free zone, zone. FOD yeah. free zone so, you'll have a uh, FOD walks in the morning uh, yeah, the military has pod walks every morning. We love those. Let's walk five miles of flight line. <laughs> Let's walk tiny five miles of flight line and look for tiny pieces of safety wire. Everybody in a long row. It's so a lot there. of times you'll we see the airport back. guys um, driving around with their truck, just out there driving around. If you look in the back, they have a bar that hangs down it, so, and it'll, yeah. they go out there and pick up stuff. And they got a thing called the FOD Boss. Airport operations has one of them. It's a yellow thing they tow behind the uh, yep. uh, the truck or truck or car, whatever, that's got a hitch. And it sweeps the, the flight line, picks a bunch of rocks and stuff. FOD could be anything from safety wire to rocks to trash, you name it. So anything that can get in an engine and cause damage. You guys ready to uh, bring the aircraft back down? Yeah. Let's right. do this. Let's do it. All right, so any jack team supervisor? Jason's jack team supervisor this time. We got left and right wing. All right, I need somebody on right wing. We're going to bring it down nice and easy at the same time, so you're going to be checking for wing level, right? Yep. If somebody starts dipping it down, left wing low or right wing high, you're going to slow down on one side or the other. Okay. Right? Just make sure we're coming down at the same time. You're going to notice that the struts will start to settle and they'll start to creak and pop and uh, you'll hear thuds and knocks and all that. Good. That's just them Keep compressing. Going. 
the mains and the nose are going to compress and make. All right. So everything out from underneath the aircraft. We don't want it to settle on anything right now. Um, another thing we can do, so everybody watch out, is you take the aircraft. You saw that thing come down. Man, we're close. Yeah. We're real close. Uh, verify with me, Jason. 2.75 inches on the strut uh, servicing. I think it would be air air service. It's later in the air servicing, right? So we keep going. Yeah, keep going. Inflating. Next page. Maybe the next page for nose. 2.75 inches. So take a measurement of that. See where we're at. We may have to just take a tiny bit of air out. Man, we're like uh, about a half inch, half inch over. So all we need to do is take the tiniest bit of air out because if you take too much out, we gotta take the aircraft back up. We don't wanna do that. Little so just like out. you take air out of, a, out of your tube, bicycle, um, tire, bicycle tire, tiny bit of air out, and uh, just do a little bit of squirt, just a tiny little squirt. All right. Wiggle, 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 yeah. <laughs> Didn't even move. Let's try again. Oh, wait. Didn't move? No. All right, a little bit more air out. Right on the money. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is how you service nose landing gear strut. Good job, fellas. Uh, the last thing to do now is, well, aside from cleaning up your work area, is make sure you annotate everything in the aircraft forms, uh, what you did and what references you used, and what are all the other requirements. And the, final, final uh, the final thing in your wording of your logbook would be, aircraft is returned to airworthiness, or aircraft is returned to airworthiness except for these conditions. Obviously this thing's not ready for airworthiness yet. Jason's got his test coming up soon, so. We're friends. You're patting my belly. <laughs> I'm rubbing his dad belly. My Buddha belly? <laughs> Buddha belly. <laughs> it's getting bigger since I got yeah, out. Yeah, she's about three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for checking out our video on struts. Yeah, yep, early 2000s rap video. Spots, spots for days. <laughs> what are you doing, froggers? I don't want my girlfriend. Yo. Thanks for checking out our video on No Strut Servicing. Sup, dog? Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. America. <laughs>